Uh, now, our next guest has been on quite a journey of discovery. Mick Fleming used to be a hardened criminal who dealt drugs and forced debts for gangsters and was arrested several times by the police. But then one day, everything changed when Mick claims he was visited by an angel who blinded him with light and transformed his life and outlook on life. So Mick has now left his old life behind and now he helps others as an ordained bishop. And Mick is uh, with us on the sofa. Hiya, Mick. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, thanks for joining us to tell us your, your incredible story. Uh, my word, it really is an incredible story. So let's go back to the bad days. Um, where were you at? How bad was it? So I had two traumatic events as a child and it was like uh, the light went out. Uh, so without being too descriptive about that, something changed in me as a child and, and everything became black and white. It was uh, dark and I followed a pattern that I wouldn't necessarily have gone down and uh, that pattern led to addiction, crime hurting other people and hurting myself. And uh, it got really bad, you know, it kind of got really bad. And I used that much drugs, I became so mentally ill, I became lost. I didn't even know who I were. So I'm taking on different personas, almost like a schizophrenic lifestyle. And uh, I used to sort of work in different cities and it was like it was different people in different cities. And uh, I became so ill in the end, uh, I, I got sectioned on the mental health act, you know, and uh, it was the level of loneliness and despair, if you, if you can imagine, just like uh, it's a self-centered type of illness is mental illness. But what I mean by that, it's like you build a wall around yourself and you just can't break out of it. And you're constantly hurting others over and over and over and over again. And that's what it was like. I mean, Mick, following your story, you. I think, I'm sorry to bring it up, you did some pretty horrific things. Could yeah. you not feel who you were or did you did you lose like your sense of empathy or...? Yeah, I didn't care. So, so it's like uh, my heart became really hard. And I think, so what had happened to me uh, meant that nobody was going to hurt me again, ever. And I was going to hurt you first. And that's what I did and that's what I grasped hold of. And I, I was like, so I'd call that sin now. And I was trapped in that sinful nature that I was, but I liked it. And this wasn't something that just actually happened. I, I, I wanted to be bad. I actually craved to be bad. So even as a child, after these terrible in, uh, things that had happened to me, I'd put my coat over the back of the chair, practice stealing from the wall, practice robbing things and doing things. I deliberately tried to be bad because good meant that you got hurt. How bad did you get? In what respect? I mean, what is the lowest you think you, you went to when you were...? I, well, I think I've committed... Uh, to be careful how, how I kind of phrase it, really, but there's the Ten Commandments. I've probably broke them all, really. Right. So... So, Mick, yeah. you're on this path and, and you're not yeah. budging from it. And then you have no. this incredible moment when you're about to carry out the most yeah. heinous yeah. of acts. Now, yeah. I can tell that story, but I'd rather you tell that story. Take us to the car that day, what yeah. you were planning on doing and what actually okay. happened. OK, so I'm, I'm collecting a debt. So that's what I'm going to call it. I'm collecting a debt and I have a gun and it's wrapped in a carrier bag and I'm in a stolen car. And I pull up to wait, waiting for the guy to come out of the gym. And he walked out of the gym and as he walked out of the gym, so I've been smoking crack and I've been drinking, so I've been taking drugs. And as I got out of the car with the gun at the side of me and this carrier bag, he turned round and he had the hands of two little girls. Now, I really wish I could say that that bothered me, but what the state I was in and the hardness of my heart, I didn't care less whether the children were there. And uh, as they turned round, and he's holding the hands, there was light shining off the hands, and the light hit me in the face, and I started to shake. I couldn't see, but only for 10, maybe 15 seconds, I started to shake. I, I, I just really struggled, there was sweat pouring off me, and I started to be sick and I ripped something in my stomach. And there was just blood everywhere. I looked like I'd been stabbed up. I got back to the car and I just drove off just to pull into this little industrial unit. And it was like, uh, I've never felt anything like it. It was like all this badness that was in me. Were like, it was like it was coming to the surface. And I said a prayer and I said a prayer, kind of like a demand on God. And I hadn't cried ever since I was a little boy that got hurt when he was a child said this prayer and nothing happened. 
And I thought, well, if that's God, and in a split second, I picked the gun up and I put it on my chin and I pulled the trigger and it didn't go off. And then I cried because I knew the gun, I knew firearms. And then I get more, I'm just getting a bit emotional because I really felt that it must be God. It couldn't be anything else. And it didn't go off. And then the tears came and it was like the tears were for that little boy. So I hadn't cried for 30 odd years. And it just started to pour out and pour out. Uh, and I believed God was real in that moment. And I believe, I'd heard Christians saying about being saved and stuff. And I didn't know what it meant, but I thought I was saved from myself. At that point, did you, did you see an angel? No, or it, it was later. Yeah, that was later, yeah. So at that point, what did you think this was? I thought it was something bigger than me, but I didn't know what it was. Uh, I didn't stop drinking or using drugs uh, that day, but within a few days, I got arrested by police with guns and thrown to the floor and everything else, and I got sectioned under the Mental Health Act. And... Uh, I was in the psychiatric unit, and whilst I was in the psychiatric unit, I met people that were like me. And I've never fit in anywhere like I fit in there. There was, I didn't have clean clothes, and they give me clean clothes. I'm talking about the patients and no cigarettes, they gave me cigarettes. And when somebody told me about what had happened to them when they was a child, and no one had ever, ever, ever thought no one had ever. And I felt the same. You were experiencing care oh, for the yeah. first time, Nick, weren't you? Yeah, for people like me. Mm. It, and from people like me to people like me, and that's what's uh, built kind of the ministry that I'm in, really. Tell us about the defining moment when you had a visitation from an angel. Yeah, so I was... Uh, it's a very strange because I, I let people judge what they think, yeah. so I'm probably six months out of a psychiatric unit, but I never had, like, vision, visiony things, and uh, I let on my bed and there's a light, and I looked, and then I can see, it's an angel, it's just my description of an angel, it's large, it's, it's white, but it's, it's strong coloured, and I'm sort of like, want to touch it to see if it's, but I didn't, and it just went, you all right? And I went, yeah, I'm all right, pal. I mean, how else would you talk to an angel? I don't know. And, uh, and it, 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 there were three things involved anyway. So were you clean at this stage, Mick? Yeah, yeah. I was clean, yeah. and, I, and I think I was <laughs> pretty sound of mind. I was probably the best I'd been for 30 years anyway. And uh, the first thing was I had to stand next to this wall, which was round the corner from this homeless hostel that I was living in, at exactly 7 o'clock. And I thought, and then it went, the angel went, and I said, I'd go, and I thought, I'm going back to doctors tomorrow. I'm, I'm not well, this, I'm just not well at all. And uh, anyway, I went and I'm having a cigarette, I used to smoke then, and exactly seven o'clock, the tiny old clock went bong, and I thought, oh, I'm nuts, I'm, I'm going. As I threw my cigarette on the floor, a guy walked around the corner and went, all right, Mick, I bet you didn't expect to see me here. And I'm not joking, I nearly collapsed. And I thought, what on earth? And the guy worked in the homeless hostel. I never spoke to him, but I'd seen him. And he said, come in, it's anonymous. I'll make you a cup of tea. And it was Narcotics Anonymous. And that's how I got my proper that recovery. It. That's when it changed. Yeah. How did you make the change to go and be a bishop? How did that well, go? So I didn't set off to be a bishop, so I, uh, I, went, I had to go away and study. And uh, I went and did a degree in theology, but I had to, I've got uh, some, quite a lot of learning difficulties with uh, dyslexia and I have a, an eye disorder. So I failed my first year to redo it, so I had to learn. So anyway, I got a good degree in the end and then I got ordained, and then it's been on the back of the work that I've, uh, I've done as, as setting churches up and things that uh, I got chosen to be consecrated as a bishop just a few months ago, so yeah. It's an amazing story, and your church on the street's doing great work, it and is. it's helping people who are in a similar situation right, to you. Yeah. We could talk all morning, Mick, yeah. about it. Oh, I've um, got goosebumps you, you do have a book, huh? Pastor Mick, um, blown away from drug dealer to life bringer. Prince William yeah. has actually written the forward, so has, uh, you've yeah. got good support there. Yeah, he's a good guy. He is a good guy as well. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Um, look, the best to look with it. There's a, a, a TV drama there in, is. In, in development, we believe, with yeah. the story. Yeah, there's two guys uh, writing it now. Uh, a good guys and a producer, and they're looking for locations and casting and everything and everything like that. So 
quite exciting. So three series, I think it's going to be. What a story, and it shows you should never give up on somebody. Yeah, you know, that is amazing. I've got goosebumps listening to you, Mick. Ah, Mick's a great story, you know, and it's your story, and just keep Thank doing you. good. Thank you. Well done to you. Have a lovely God Christmas, bless. all right? And you. Thank good you. Man. Lovely talking to you.